Building a PC comes with a myriad of questions of what different components you need and how each different option can affect the system as a whole. This video, hopefully, will serve to answer at least one of those questions that frequently comes up whenever you have to build a new computer. How much RAM do I need? Let's find out. Now to start off with my testing methodology, I decided to try different RAM configurations for each amount. Meaning that for 8GB, there's both a single 8GB stick as well as two 4GB sticks. All of the benchmarks were run with the same RAM speed of 2400MHz and the same cast latency of 16, 16, 16, 36 at 1.35 volts. I tested all of the RAM on an MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon with an Intel Core i7-6700K processor clocked at 4.4 GHz. I didn't attempt to vary the processor or latency or RAM speed at all because I think those would be deserving of a separate video. I simply isolated the RAM amounts and configuration, but not the underlying settings. Also, since I'm using a Skylake system, this is expressly indicative of DDR4 RAM, and as such, the minimum RAM amount was a single 4GB stick. For the testing, I utilized both a GTX 1080 as well as an R7 370 to give a representation of both AMD and NVIDIA systems, but also to see if system RAM may be influenced by VRAM on a GPU with the GTX 1080 having 8GB of GDDR5X and the R7 370 having 2GB of GDDR5. The games that I chose to test may be or may not be fully representative of everything that you may play but I saw them as a good representation of current and previous generation titles and genres which could reproduce similar results when benchmarking. So for benchmarking, I used Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Tomb Raider, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, both in DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Each game was run at their maximum detail settings at a 1920 by 1080 resolution. So with that, let's jump into the results. For reference, I consider the one 4GB stick as a baseline for any percentage changes. Starting off with the GTX 1080 results, CSGO saw roughly 8-10% to improvement in most cases where dual channel RAM was used, with the two 8GB sticks yielding the best overall result. For Shadow of Mordor, most of the results were pretty much within the margin of error once you got beyond the 4GB of RAM. Tomb Raider is the same result, but with the improvement on all the other configs being barely a few frames per second. Rise of the Tomb Raider is where the big result differences come in with both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, with again the dual channel configs having the best result and the two 8GB sticks being best in DX11 and the two 4GB sticks being best in DX12. For the R7 370, the results are slightly similar, but not entirely so. For CSGO, there's basically no difference in RAM configurations. For Shadow of Mortar, their percentage gains were nearly double that of the GTX 1080, with a roughly 8.5% increase in FPS over a single 4GB stick. For Tomb Raider, strangely enough, each configuration saw a decrease from the single 4GB stick, but basically all were still within the same margin of error. Rise of the Tomb Raider provides roughly the same result with a 25-30% to 30 gain in FPS over 4 gigabytes, but leveling off after that. If you need to go back to look at the results to corroborate what I'm saying, totally fine. But from all of the testing that I did, it seems that going with only 4 gigabytes of RAM, no matter what, is the worst choice for a gaming rig. However, beyond 8GB, it really doesn't appear that there's any benefit at this point with the titles that I've tested to really raise the amount of RAM that you have. In most instances, going with two 4GB sticks was better than a sing getting a single 8GB, but not entirely enough that I would suggest that you forego getting a single 8GB stick if you only have two DIMM slots and plan to upgrade later. I think the definitive conclusion is basically anything more than 4GB is appropriate for modern 1080p gaming, but going for 16 over 8 likely isn't going to be necessary in most instances. However, I'm sure there's games out there that will annihilate 8 gigs and you'll need 16, but I think that'll be on a case-by-case -case basis. 8 gigs seems to be a safe minimum at this point in time for 1080p gaming. And with that conclusion, I'd like to thank Wootware for sponsoring this video. If you're in South Africa, Wootware has everything that you might need for your new system build, including a wide variety of RAM. Their prices, selection, and incredible customer support team make shopping at Wootware an absolute bliss. So head on over to wootware.co.za to wood up your PC. The link is in the video description. So, 
That's it for this. 8 gigabytes seems to be safe for 1080p gaming. 16 is not really necessary. Like this video if you found it helpful at all. Dislike it if you disagree with me, my conclusions, or you know of several games that require 32 gigabytes of RAM and this whole video was a waste of time for you. Let me know down in the comments if you like this style of video, and if so, what other concepts that you would want me to explore for future videos. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.